Hey girl, what's up? Hey! How are you doing? Good. Okay, um, but like, how are you really? I mean, I'm fine. Fine as in, I had a really good day today, or fine as in, I don't even want to talk about it? I don't know. I mean, it was a fine day. It was good, I guess. Okay, well, how has your family been? They're good? Why? I don't know. I care about you. What did you do this morning? I don't know. Nothing. Hmm. You don't seem like your regular self, but hey, I'm going to borrow you this video from my friend Tanner, and we could talk about talk about it over coffee. I mean, I'm kind of busy today. Addie, you're on FaceTime. I can see you. You're literally just hanging out outside your house. So I'll see you later for coffee. Uh, fine. I'm only gonna go for the coffee though. Awesome. I'll see you soon. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. No one can oppose the Holy Host. Holy man and holy God, He is the GOAT. He's the GOAT, He's the GOAT. That's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. No one can oppose the Holy Host. Holy man and holy God, He is the GOAT. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Chris, and this is week three of the GOAT. Can I ask y'all a question? Has there ever been a time in your life when you've pretended to be somebody else? Now, in my era, I remember going to the basketball court and every shot that I took up, guess what I said? I said, Jordan. And then I remember a generation that also said LeBron or Curry. And there's a lot of people right now even saying Kobe when they shoot that shot. Now, things like that are perfectly okay, but in real life, have you pretended or put on a front and pretended to act like somebody else? Now, a deeper question, have you put on a front to really act like somebody else that you're probably not? Well, let me go to a scripture for this week, and you're gonna find Jesus in a situation, you're gonna find Jesus in a situation and he's surrounded by a couple different types of folks that try to call him out on things. And you'll see why we call him the greatest of all time. Because Jesus, despite some people in this room being fake, he knew exactly what they were already thinking. So let's turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 6 through 11. Luke chapter 6, verse 6. On another Sabbath, Jesus... He entered the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, so that they may find a reason to accuse him. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to the man with the withered hand, Come and stand here. And he rose and he stood there, and Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? to save life or to destroy it. And after looking around at them all, he said to him, stretch out your hand. And he did so and his hand was restored. Now you would think in this room that people would be excited that Jesus just did this miracle. He performed this miracle on a man with the withered hand. But look at the response of some of the people that were kind of fake in the room. They were filled with fury and disgust with one another what they might do to Jesus. Yo, there's a lot going on in this specific story. Jesus, the greatest of all time, is in this room. And get this, if you're in the room, he knows, he would have known your thoughts, he would have known what you were thinking about him. There's a man that had a physical issue. Jesus called him out, but there was some religious folks in the room that were saying, yo, you can't do this on the Sabbath, trying to check Jesus. Well, guess what? It says right there in the scripture that Jesus already knew their thoughts and he performed this miracle anyway because he, he basically flipped the script and said, yo, is it better that I heal somebody? Look, I just performed this miracle. And instead of their response being with great joy and admiration for Jesus, they were hating on him and start plotting to kill him. 
Now, what's this have to do with us today? Well, quite frankly, even in this video right now, I'm kind of putting on a front. Sometimes we're kind of ashamed at where we're at. Now, I'm sitting here this whole time and I have Tanner cropping out what's really going on around me. In reality, my feet are wet. My feet are mad cold and I kind of look silly out here with a lot of people looking at me like this dude is, is super goofy right now. But I think that we can learn a lot from this scripture. Like we're flooded. We are flooded with so many different messages, so many different images about what kind of person that we should be. And I'm talking about deeper than your jump shot or deeper than trying to be like this other celebrity, but our hearts. What if we really grew to appreciate the fact that we serve a God that knows who we are, that we can be known by God and that we can know him? You see, that should change the frame of our thought process because we'd understand that we realize that we don't have to front anymore. We don't have to crop out all the things that we think people don't want to see about us. God knows exactly where we're at. He knows exactly where we stand with him. He knows exactly how we view him. So in some ways, let me ask you this question. Does it seem kind of weird that Jesus knows all about you? Or is it comforting? And I think for, for many of us people that walk with a relationship with the Lord, there's something kind of weird about that, right? where he already understands us, but there's also something that should free us where we understand that we serve a God that loves us right now, even in our mess. Loves us even in this state where we try to maybe even crop him out of our life. Well, I wanna encourage you this week to be honest. It's a little difficult to be honest where you're at in life sometimes, but let me ask you guys a more serious question. Are there, are there people in your life that you can be vulnerable with? Are there people in your life that maybe you wouldn't feel ashamed at sharing some of your junk? Because I know for me, I have, I have some people right on, on my phone right now that I can hit up to ask them to pray for me. Uh, obviously, we know that we can hit up God anytime. There's some of you that may feel like the man with the withered hand that's sitting in a room uh, around people that you feel misunderstood, you feel like no one understands where you're sitting at in life, uh, God does. And the cool thing about the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Jesus, the God that we serve, is that he is there with you. Even when you feel indifferent, even when you feel like there's nobody else that's listening to you, you can call on God. At the end of the day, when it comes to what we think about Jesus, we can try to front all we want. But the amazing thing about the greatest of all time is he knows exactly where we are. He knows our heart right now. And even more so, like he treated the man with the withered hand, he knows what we need. And some of us need to touch, some of us need to, to, to stretch out our hands to God, the same as the man with the physical ailment. He had to physically stretch out his hand to God, to Jesus, in order to receive that miracle in order to receive the love, uh, the full manifestation of God's power in, in, in that moment. So we hope that this week, as you can embrace the Jesus, as he knows where you are, he knows you. He knows you and he loves you exactly where you're at, even if it's in a messed up situation. Hey, we love you. I'm gonna pass this back on. You know what? There was some drama earlier, hopefully, Hopefully they didn't figure a couple of things out. So let's check back in with Addie and Camila and see how that situation turned out. Until next time, love y'all. Subscribe, like. Hey, I gotta get out of here though. It's crazy. It's crazy.
gosh, we're twinning. <laughs> So, what do you think about the video? Honestly, I was kind of mad that you sent it to me at first. It was kind of annoying. Um, but I ended up watching it, and it was really good. Um, good. I, yeah, I really liked it. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, like what Tanner was saying is that we are truly known and loved by our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. So, I want to know how your life's been really going on. Yeah, I appreciate... Yeah. I mean, I appreciate you reaching out. I appreciate you asking me to get together. Um, to be honest, Camila, like, stuff's been not great right now. It's been really rough. A lot of my family stuff again, you know? I got a call from my mom. Y'all made up and everything, but have y'all washed your hands? Oh! <laughs> 